Hi, hello and welcome to another episode from China Teacher Brand, where I share with you what it is like to live and work in China. Today, I want to tell you about some of the things that have taken place um, in my life over the last uh, few days here over the weekend. Um, I want to tell you about uh, what happened on Saturday. I wanted to donate blood here in China. I've donated blood before, but I've never done it in China. So um, there's a kid here in, in Dongguan who needs a blood transfusion. So um, a restaurant owned by a foreigner was organizing kind of like a, you call it a blood drive, right? So um, I asked if I could make a video of the, oh, the, the whole situation. And um, I was told that um, I shouldn't make a video because they didn't want to make the, the, the whole ordeal a circus. Now, I respect that. So even though I saw some social media pictures that the restaurant put of the event. But anyway, um, I decided to go early and not bother people. So I arrived there and they take my blood pressure and my heart rate and my heart rate was a little bit elevated. So they told me uh, to have a rest and do it again in five or 10 minutes. I do it again and my heart rate is back to normal. But then they take the actual blood test, the blood sample, and that came out uh, with something wrong. They said that uh, there's a number that's a little bit high and that I couldn't donate blood. So that was what happened on Saturday. Unfortunately, I don't know what the word is because it was in Chinese, but I did ask, okay, why is this cost and why do you want me to come like in two weeks? And they said, well, it, it can be caused by not having rested very well. That's one of the reasons why it could happen. Also it could be alcohol consumption and the other one could be being overweight. So two out of three, that's me. But I want to talk about the lack of sleep. This is mainly due to stress. I am and everybody, a lot of people are under a lot of stress. We don't know what's going to happen with our futures. We don't know. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people have had to close their businesses. And uh, well, that, that level of stress affects your health. That level of concern affects your health. If you remember a few uh, videos ago, I talked about uh, I had to take my wife to the hospital because she was getting very, very debilitating migraines. And it's basically for the same reason. She can't sleep. She can't clear her head. She can't relax. So it's, it's, it's a very serious problem. And we don't know how we're going to address it. Now, uh, last Saturday, also last weekend, the uh, South China Mall, the place where we have uh, one of our centers, they organized like an advertising event. And uh, I'm here to report that that was a huge, huge failure. Um, we did not get a single customer. We did not get a single phone number. We did not get a single person to scan our QR code. Nothing over the four days. And it's just people are not ready. People are not ready to go out there and spend money. Uh, as I said, losing jobs, losing orders, not knowing what the future is going to be um, has caused these problems. So unless there's kind of like a trickle down effect where the economy is reactivated at a certain level and, and starts to trickle down to smaller businesses like ours, then uh, we're in for a lot of hurt for a long time. <clears throat> now, I want to mention something interesting that's very telling. Over my time here in China, I have done things that are kind of weird. Like I, I used to distribute flyers for my training center. And as a white face, as a foreigner distributing flyers, I never had an issue people actually refusing to take my flyer. They were actually quite interested to say like, well, this is a white guy doing something that <clears throat> only Chinese people do, mostly only Chinese people do here in China. So they will all take my flyers. I never had an issue getting people to take my flyers. This weekend, I did not get one person to take my flyers. Nobody, Chinese or foreigners, they weren't taking any flyers. They don't want to have the uncomfortable conversation with like, oh, I can't afford it, sorry. Or, or maybe discrimination. They fear that I'm a foreigner and uh, maybe I carry the virus and they don't want to 
grab something that I have grabbed. I don't know, but that's pretty unusual. That's something that I wanted to talk about because it's not very, very common. So I have to say that China has done an amazing, an amazing job of controlling this um, pandemic. Uh, the human management, the, the financial management, right? How they control the, the stock market. <clears throat> all the doctors and the medical teams, unbelievable work. But I do wonder if we are going to get some kind of financial aid. The people who have lost their jobs, the people who have lost their businesses, the people who are hanging in there by a thread like, like me. Um, is there any kind of financial package coming uh, for us like what we see for example in the united states that would that would be very very useful uh but i know nothing of this of this sort over here sorry i got the hiccups now um now that's that's what i wanted to to share with you so far but there's another topic that i wanted to uh bring up and this is about some comments that people have left in, in my videos some guy was asking me what was my opinion about uh Guo Wengui. Guo, Guo Wengui is a is exiled in in America. He's a billionaire, and um, well, I knew tangentially of him. Uh, never actually heard anything in the details. So I clicked a few videos here and there, and I watched a video by Vice, you know, HBO Vice, uh, and they talked to him. And just from watching that video, the guy starts talking about oh. You see, the media lies. They say that I bought this apartment in Central Park for 62. Okay, whatever number I say, I'm very bad with numbers. So he says, oh, I bought this apartment for 62 million. But in fact, I really paid $85 million. So you see, that's the thing. And I'm like, okay. And at the end of the video, here's the interesting thing. The guys from Vice, they corroborate this information with some legal information. And he actually paid 62 not 85 so the guy was actually lying in the video about how other people lie that's the world we're living the more the more lies you put out there then the, the further away we are from the truth and and that's a strategy that seems to be a strategy by a lot of people so that's what i have to say about the person who asked me uh my opinion about this guy now i also have to be honest and tell you that i don't like very rich people i have an issue with very rich people i don't trust very rich people this is from my upbringing and this is my psychological problem and an emotional problem that i have because i i come from a well-off family we were never lacking anything but my father made sure that we went to some of the best schools in the country and, and they put us in contact with people that were actually very, very wealthy, but he never gave us anything for free. We would have to work for everything and everything was, he never spoiled us. So I always felt like I didn't belong in these circles. And, and that probably has hindered me in life because I don't have a good relationship with money. Like I like money, but, but I don't want to have too much money to become like one of those guys. So. Yeah, when I see a billionaire, I always think, like, did he get his money? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. It's, it's that level of doubt in my mind about uh, a billionaire. It's my bad. Nothing to do with billionaires. But it's just the way that I perceive them. So, um, this guy is interesting because he says, Oh, I have dirt on leaders of the CCP. And I want to change China. And I'm like, well... If you have dirt and you want to change China, why are you extorting them? Why not just release the dirt and change China? Why why do you do this bullshit game of I have information? So, but you're going to get what you want. That's why you're not releasing it. It's similar to what Serpensa did in one of his videos. He he says, "Look, I have a lot of information where I can make China look very bad." And I'm like, so what you're not releasing it because you're kind what are you? just if you have something and you want to show it and you want to change something just do it um so yeah it's it's weird about this guo guo wen guo gui um 
I don't trust him one bit on what he says. Now, a lot of people say, oh, in the comment section when, when talking about these uh, situations in China and China in general, uh, China is a dictatorship. And I'm like, again, let's go back for a second. Um, how can you say that China is a dictatorship when they allowed somebody like 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 Sir Pensa, for example, or Lao Wai to live in the country to 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 do their things and have their families for about a year, a year and a half when they were producing really, really negative content about China. Why would you call that a dictatorship? I mean, if you're talking about a dictatorship, if China were a dictatorship, which is not, okay, they would have been disappeared, like like Khashoggi, for example. In, in, in the Saudi Arabia. Talk about disappearing somebody, right? So, no, no, this is not a dictatorship. All right, guys, here's one last bit that I forgot because a lot of people are gonna say like, oh, why is it that, that these guys, this, these YouTubers don't live in China anymore? And I think that basically it was not really the government. I mean, think about it. Do you think the government doesn't know what they do? Do you think the government doesn't know the kind of content that they were putting together i i i i, I mean as a, as a adv china or their own particular channels of course they did but i think what actually pushed them away from china was just the regular people the regular people that were watching their content that were looking at their content and 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 identifying them on the streets because of course they're foreigners right so i think that that's actually what happened it was not like the government went after them it was probably just the regular people that caught up with their stories and with their with their videos and they just threw them away that's what i think it is okay let's continue with the video um now i think that uh the person the right person to make a video about guo wengui would be nathan rich because his due diligence is always on point. He's really, really thorough. So Nathan, if you're watching this, that'll be a great video for you to make, man. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, as always, remember, if you like the content on my channel, then consider subscribing to it. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there's a new video. And uh, remember, if you want to support my channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee in the link in the description down below. Um, I want to thank all of you who have contributed so far. And uh, now, well, you can also see this QR code here that uh, can be used with WeChat for people who are here in China and want to contribute. I got my first contribution this morning. Thank you very much. I still can't read the name of the person who sent it, but well, if you sent some money today through WeChat, you've been the only one. So thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much and well, until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.